So this is the state of our simulation right now, and you can see that our flip simulation is doing a lot of things that we don't want it to do. Primarily, it's rising too much in the air, and it's reaching the top of the cliff. You can also see that uh, our fluid is colliding with the top layer of our flip tank, and because under the flip object we had the closed boundaries in plus y switched off, it doesn't collide instead it goes through it. But how can we fix this? How can we fix this motion where it's going too crazy up in the air? Well, a couple of things. Obviously, we can use the drag force, which we're going to use. We're also going to take a look at the collision velocity because that's going to change a lot of things. And we're also going to take a look at the detect droplets and collision method. So let's dive into the collision velocity side of things. So if you go to your flip solver and under the volume motion tab, under the collision tab, there is a parameter called velocity scale. And obviously, if I double this, my fluid will rise up even more in the air. But we sort of want the opposite. We want the fluid to sort of, you know, calm down a bit and not rise as much. So for this example, I'm going to put that value to 0 0.725. Now let's take a look at the collision method. Now in the particle motion tab, there is a collision detection parameter, which is by default set to particle. Now particle method is the most accurate method to detect your collisions with, but it's also the slowest method. So let's say if you have resources, if you have enough RAM resources in your system, by all means use the particle method. But also if you don't, then it's advisable to use the move outside collision. It gives you pretty much the same results, but with less RAM usage. Now if your camera is super close to your sim, again, I would recommend you to use the particle method. But for this example, we're gonna use the move outside collisions. Now, let's talk about droplets before we go into the drag forces. Now, droplets are something that are switched off by default. And under the particle motion tab, there is a tab called droplets. I'm going to switch that on. So it's going to detect my droplets. Now, what does droplet do really? So to show this, I have a single frame from the high-risk sim of this shot right here with me. And you can see that we have crazy amount of points. So we've got almost 14 million points here. Now you can see that there is a lot of details, a lot of tiny details that we can see. But if I middle click on my, on my node here, there is an attribute called droplet. And obviously this attribute gets saved out if you have detect droplets checked on. But where is droplet? What is droplets? So what I've done is, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to put down a blossom. And because it's an attribute, it's not going to be showing in the group here. So what we have to do, we're going to call in an attribute by typing at and then droplet. And I'm going to say anything that is greater than zero. So essentially, all the droplets, because droplet value go from zero to one. So if droplets are there, that's going to blast them out. This blast stop is going to delete them. But it's not doing anything. So what I'm going to do is group type points. And you would see we get rid of a lot of tiny lone particles. Now if I go delete non-selected, so isolating the droplets, this is our droplets. That's, that's, that's the whole gist of droplets, these tiny lone particles that would help us a lot in white water sim as well when we do the foam elements. So if I go back to my .NET and I say minimum particle, so there are two options. Well, there's a bunch of options, but the two options is minimum particle density and maximum particle density. Now, minimum particle density means that or if any of the surrounding particles have the density lower than this value, 
it would convert into droplets. So a particle has a droplet value of 1 when the surrounding fluid particle density is lower than this value. So for this example, I'm going to put that to 0 0.8. And what's the max particle density? Now, max particle density is also the same thing. A particle has a droplet value of 0, so it's the other way around when the surrounding fluid particle density is above this value. So the droplet value is going to be lower than 0 0.8, and if it's higher than 1.4, the droplet value go drops to 0. And this is a way to control the droplet in your fluid simulation. For the most part, the default values of 0 0.5 and 1 would work flawlessly. But for this example, uh, let's put that to 0 0.8 to 1.4. Right. And volume motion. Okay, now let's talk about drags. Now, uh, what I want to do is, essentially, the droplets, they have the tendency to have a mind of their own because what they do is when a droplet is fully when a droplet has a value of 1 they don't follow the fluid simulation anymore they don't you know follow the fluid behavior anymore and that could result in exploding droplet sims your simulation might be looking good your simulation might be looking very stable and how like the speed of the simulation the height of the simulation everything would look good but then droplets would explode and for that, what we can do is we can use the drag force, not only on the base sim, but also specifically on the droplets. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop down a node called pop drag. And it's essentially a particle node that's used in pop sim, but because flip, we are dealing with our flip points here, we can also use this in a flip simulation. And I'm going to connect that to the second input, which is the particle velocity. Right. And I'm going to put the air resistance, which is my drag value, to 0 0.25. But at the minute, the entire thing is being dragged, not just the droplet. So what I can do is I can check on the group here and type in at droplet greater than 0 0.35. Now what this would do this would drag this would put a drag of 0.25 on all the droplets that have a value of more than 0.35 because remember the droplets they go from 0 to 1 so any droplet which has a value of 0 0.35 or less than 0 0.35 would not get affected by this drag but anything above it would get affected by this drag and I'm going to drop down another drag uh, force or pop drag. And this time I'm going to, you know, drag the entire thing down by a very faint value. So it's almost negligible, but it's there. So 0 0.009. Right. So now here's the question. How does my sim look with all these new settings? Well, I have a flipbook here. So let's take a look. Right, so I have a flipbook here, and this is the flipbook with the drag, the move outside collision method, and obviously the lower down collision velocity. And this is how it looks. And you can see our simulation is looking a lot more stable, a lot nicer, and a lot more realistic. It's not going crazy, our drag is working very well. And you can see, obviously, this is the lower res sim. So if you take a look at the one high res frame here, this is how it's going to end up looking. And this is how my droplets are going to be. So now if I put a droplet greater than 0 0.35, you would see that some of the droplets, they got deleted, correct? And all these droplets will have our drag force. Right, so I'm just going to put that back to zero, so get all those, all those uh, droplets in there. Right, now let's take a look. Uh, so obviously this is our simulation here. So now let's take a look on how we can take our simulation from inside the DOP and call it outside into the SOP level so we can cache it out. And let's also take a look at the flipbook of our higher rest sim.